please welcome to perform Like It or Not, welcome to Generation Slacktivist, Catherine Hudson. Hello? Yeah, who? Nah, nah. Now, I'm just not really into politics and stuff. Yeah, yeah, right. Thanks, thanks, bye. That's what I heard from us during the federal election campaign. That we just don't give. That politics is like, whatever. That fugly people have opinions. But we all have opinions. We have opinions. Even the people on the phones had opinions. Opinions like refugees or boat people, marriage equality or marriage hegemony, climate change or axe the tax. Opinions on things that affect our lives, like the struggle up the employment queue, the impossible quest for the first home buyer, and youth suicide. And our youth culture is more powerful than ever before. We're richer, we're more independent, and we have a voice. But we don't articulate our opinions. We don't use our power. We don't engage in the political process. We just don't seem to care. Why? Is it the media? We celebrate Kardashians as the dedicated followers of KK. Yet we revel in the ritual humiliation of our intellectuals by shock jocks. Or is it politics? where boring old men in blue ties and tight lycra delivering stupid, pacifying platitudes. Stop the boats, ax the tax, repay the debt, look into my eyes. Look, look into my eyes. Or is it us? Where self-knowledge is replaced by, uh, where self-knowledge has been replaced by selfies for the world. And 5,000 likes is more important than one conversation one commitment. 200 years ago, I know it's a very long time ago, 200 years ago, the female factory workers of Scotland, for them life was hard. Working in dark, satanic mills since they were children, horribly exploited by their employers, you know, like where our smartphones are made today. These women couldn't vote. They couldn't own property and most couldn't read. These women had no power, but they had opinions. For every day as they heckled the jute fibres for making hessian bags, one of the women would read the newspaper to the factory floor. And through this, they were able to become knowledgeable. They could debate issues. They could feel empowered. These hecklers were alienated from the political, from politics. But through their acquisition of knowledge, they became engaged in the political process and thrashed out ideas as well as the Jute. I was born in the year of Mosaic, 1993. It was the first graphic web browser. We are the web generation. And today, we have the greatest access to information ever. And we use these tools every day for entertainment, for parties, for Facebook and Twitter, for sharing photos and for piracy. But we don't do politics. For example, 80% of us support marriage equality. So you guys, not you. 80% of us support marriage equality. That's it. Yet do we really feel the need to argue for it? And it's not just us. It's the tabloid media, it's the opportunistic politicians, it's the day, it's the time, it's the weather, it's if we were willing to compromise, maybe if we were just willing to wait that little bit longer, but... During the election, Katy Perry challenged Tony Abbott about his views on marriage equality. Katy Perry heckled Tony Abbott about an issue that we care about about an issue that affects our lives. And she did it better than any journalist. 
I guess it's not surprising that we're disengaged from advocating for issues like marriage equality and climate change when crazies like Alan Jones and pseudo Lord Monckton have hijacked the political agenda. These loonies now count for more in our opinion than Nobel Prize winning scientists. And this hostility to rational thought is now so potent that our Minister for the Environment thinks it's okay to consult Wikipedia for information rather than the intergovernmental panel on climate change. Now, way before Wikipedia, way, 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 way before Wikipedia, the hecklers relied on their daily readings of the newspapers to develop their opinions. The hecklers used their factory floor showdowns to learn how to argue. And these disempowered, mostly illiterate women took these skills out of the factory and into the community. Now, in this time, public meetings, not press releases, were the medium for political communication. A politician would stand on a podium surrounded by the landed gentry and elites and deliver a set piece speech to passive audiences. The hecklers disrupted this organised politeness of these public meetings. They used their newfound knowledge to engage with people, to engage with their politicians, to take on politicians, to hold their representatives to account. They heckled. And in the process, changed the mode of public debate forever. The hecklers were brave enough to think for themselves. So why are we drawn by, in by the Pied Piper politics of platitudes and three-word slogans which distract us from our opinions, from our power? Now, there are always vested interests in politics. And these vested interests are often quite good political donors. These lobbyists use their influence to, uh, for economic gain. They delay public policy. They amend public policy. Vested interests like tobacco companies, who for years denied that smoking caused cancer because the truth cost them money. Mining companies that denied that asbestos caused methothelioma and that lead in paint and petrol caused brain damage in children because the truth cost them money. Chemical manufacturers who denied that 2,4-D and 2,4-5-T caused birth defects because the truth cost them money. These products also cost lives. And when we saw through the spin and recognised the true cost, we demanded that our politicians act. But just think for a moment how many millions of lives could have been saved if we listened to the scientists and the experts a little bit earlier, not the spin doctors and self-appointed mouths of popular opinion. Now, tobacco, asbestos and lead are horrible products. They're really dangerous. But they did affect relatively few people. Climate change, on the other hand, affects everyone. All of us, you and me. And yet we are happy to vote for representatives that ignore the science. We're happy to support the head in the sand ideology that leads to the shutting down of independent research institutes and the sacking of scientists. And we encourage a government that's willing to gamble it all for a few votes. Now, many politicians only care what's advantageous for the next election. They <clears throat> They pander to racism by labelling refugees illegals. They pander to bigotry by suggesting that marriage equality is somehow corrupting an esteemed institution. And they pander to greed 
by calling climate change absolute crap. But we care. And so it's up to us to fight for humane treatment of refugees, for marriage equality. It's up to us to fight for the National Disability Insurance Scheme. It's up to us to fight for better education and better health care. And frankly, our current politicians will be dead before climate change starts to really affect our lives, but we'll be alive and our children will be alive, so it's up to us to fight for action on climate change. We can't afford to be disengaged. So let's stop the selfies and celebrity glorification. Let's stop parroting today, tonight and to UE's views. Let's stop ignoring the need to act. Today, we have access to the information. We certainly have the power. And we should have opinions on all things that matter. So let's start heckling. <laughs>